Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In today's episode we are checking out the long-awaited India Fox Tecco F-35 Lightning II. This aircraft has received a lot of hype over the last few months and today we're going to find out if it was all worth it. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, folks, so jumping right into it, I want to let everyone know this thing is 25 euros. Um, I can't remember what that came out to in U.S. dollars. I really don't remember. I don't really pay attention much. But 25 euros, uh, you guys can find it on the Sim Market website. Link to it uh, down in the description below, as always. Also, please be aware that this is... Just like as always, it's not so much a review as it is my first impressions. It is my impressions of this particular aircraft, and I'm letting you guys make your decisions, you know, based on that information, and hopefully it helps. So jumping right into it, guys, the exterior textures, I think, are absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, and what's funny about it, too, is I'm not particularly an F-35 fan. I'm more partial to the Raptor, if I may. Um, I think the F-35 kind of looks goofy. However... For the sake of the modeling of this aircraft, it looks absolutely fantastic. There was absolutely a ton of work clearly done on this bird uh, to uh, to bring it to life. It's I absolutely love it. Um, the detail and uh, time taken to make the exterior textures here was obviously uh, quite extensive. Um, and I really, really appreciate that, especially when we're dealing with a payware aircraft. Um, everything from the landing gear struts all the way across to the fuselage to the detail here that you guys can see here to the uh, um, uh, vertical fan uh, cover up here. I mean, just everything. It looks absolutely great. They've really done a great job. By the way, there are two variants, I believe, that come with it. The A and the B. I don't think the C is included. I could be mistaken on that. Um, honestly, I never really pay attention to the C. Um but this is the B variant. There is an aircraft carrier as well that comes with it as well, which we'll be showcasing probably in a later video today. We're just getting you started. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody start out with trying to do traps, but, you know, to each their own. Um, not a whole lot more to say in regard to the exterior textures. I mean, guys, you can see for yourselves, definitely meets up with the Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, expectations. Remember that you should not expect to see a whole lot of reflection on an aircraft like this. We don't want it reflective. Um, military aircraft are typically very, very dull. You, you Again, you don't want that reflection. That reflection from up high uh, being seen down low can be a spotlight on an aircraft. We obviously wouldn't want that on a stealth fighter. So um, let's go ahead and jump in the seat here. And jumping into the cockpit, I mean, I just... Again, I don't really have any complaints um, for the price, and it is a very simple cockpit. You guys got to understand, you, you should not be expecting to see a whole lot of buttons and switches as pretty much everything is handled by the forward display. Um, I mean, I don't even think, I think the only standby instrument we have here is still technically a digital ADI. Um, but let's go ahead and see about getting the aircraft started up here because again the textures there really isn't a whole lot to discuss uh, It's got that side stick mount that you find in like in the f-16 um, And I believe the motion is very similar to the f-16 in the fact that it doesn't actually have full range of motion As you would see like in a center stick uh, Like the f-18 or the a-10 something to that to that uh, effect where the stick has full range of motion I think it's more like the f-16 where it only has a very slight uh, range of motion and is more pressure sensitive um, and what I mean by pressure sensitive is how it's flown is if you put a ton of pressure into the flight stick when we go to make a left turn okay and you, and you just you know really push hard on the stick with your left hand the aircraft's going to sense that amount of pressure and go whoa this guy wants to turn right so boom the aircraft's going to bank very very hard but if you put very light pressure into that same left turn and that same range of motion the aircraft's going to handle very very gently and we'll see some of that when we get up in air uh, airborne here so let's see, let's remove some uh, caution pins here. There's that on the canopy. Here's this on the ejection handle. Uh, we, let's see, well, I mean, we could have armed the ejection handle, but there isn't much point yet. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get rolling here. Now, 
this is just sort of my first preliminary start. I haven't gone through all the checklists and all that jazz. Just sort of played around with it, see what it took to get the aircraft started. And then uh, we'll deal with everything else at a later time. So don't consider this to be by the book because it is not. All right, let's get going. So we got battery on, IPP on, the engines generators on. I believe that's what that is. And basically our APU, which is the IPP here. I believe that is the APU, and you have auto and start. Uh, cabin pressure, let's go to norm. The sounds are absolutely wonderful. They've done a great job with the sounds. I've ran through a quick engine start thus far, but I haven't actually flown the aircraft, so as far as that goes, we'll be doing that together. Uh, here's for our HUD display. So we can set that to night, auto, or day. Um, I recommend honestly night as much as possible because it makes it a little bit easier to see when we get that extreme brightness on the day setting here um, things tend to get a bit washed out but it's still not too bad you can see there so oops you know what I forgot to do uh, I forgot to move there's a little switch right over here that we need to kick over that should let the engine start assuming that I didn't mess up the engine start sequence I might have messed up the engine start sequence. I'm pretty sure I did. So let's come back again. There it goes. Alright, so I'm going to, while we're waiting for the engines to start, let's set up a couple custom views. Something more like this. Obviously we want to be able to see everything so let's do a control alt one here actually, I really don't know that I need another one as long as I can get back to that pretty easily I think we'll be okay maybe up a little higher huh oh Got to use the touch screen here that activates the fuel valve. So much of this is touch screen and we'll get a closer view. You know what? Let's do that. Okay, let's make this two. There we go. Now we have engine start. That's an engine start. turn this off for now. There we go. So, we have the aircraft started. Let's go ahead and bring those engine sounds down a bit. Make sure you guys can hear me nice and clear. And everything that you can do can be accessed from the touch screen. I mean, it's just, I mean, you saw that's how we turned our fuel on. Okay, that's what this guy right here was. That was basically inducing fuel into the engines. But you can touch just about anything. Okay, we got, uh, Here's all of our radio channels. Here's how we swap the autopilot and radios. You can actually swap the display back and forth depending on how you want that. Uh, let's see here. At the corner of each of these screens, you can determine what's here. So if you want a checklist here, we can do that. Let's say we want uh, the CNI here. Oh, go figure. Uh, what about a fuel page? We want that over here. Uh, maybe we want, what do we want over here? Um, what about the FE page? There we go. Okay. Um, and then here again we have our comms. So let's come out of that menu here. Um, but let's say we want to come up here and go to menu. We go turn on our lights. This is where we turn all of our lights on. So let's see here. Let's set these to position lights on, strobe lights on, formation lights on. Uh, weapons. We don't have anything, but we can actually open the weapon doors, which is kind of cool. So let's see here. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. It took me a second last time. Uh, do, 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 do. That's HMD. That's here. Oh no, that's H10. There we go. Where did I find? Let me find the weapons page because that was pretty cool too. You can actually open up the doors. Um, do, do, is it weapons? No. Give me a second. 
Like I said, haven't been, haven't had a whole lot of time in this aircraft yet. But there is one screen where we can get to. It's not going to be the FLIR. I don't think it's going to be. No, that's engine read. FE is that one. Yep. Flight control services. That that might be it. Where did I see that? I really wanted to show you guys this and I can't remember where the heck I find it. That's autopilot. They've really done a great job integrating a lot of this stuff into this. It was really a neat way to do it. Oh wait, is it here? There we go. Say, so here's our weapon page. And we can go to open the doors and check it out. There they are, there's the weapon bays opened up. Isn't that neat? I know it's something simple, but I think it's silly and cool. So now we can close the doors. And there they go. Alright, so. Guys got to see the fun stuff. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. So, to close the canopy, I'm going to pull this little yellow handle down. Alright, and let's get ready to go. All right, let's get her out of here. So, let's get out. Pretty simple. Let's see, that's landing lights. Let's turn our parking brake off here. Let's see, we got a runway right out there. A taxiway heading out that way. There's a windsock. So it looks like we're taking off with a crosswind today. All right. Here we go. Nose wheel uh, maneuverability is extremely well done. Throttle response is rather rapid, so uh, be very gentle with it at first. Until you get used to it, because it's no lie. But man, she, uh, she definitely gets up to taxi. Got, definitely got to be ready for that. This is basically the throttles at idle. Lower down a bit. Taxi down to the other end here. Oh. Okay, this thing will get going. Now. I haven't had a chance to, obviously, like I said, I have yet to fly it. So this will be our first flight in this aircraft. Um, so I haven't had a chance to look into the, uh, the VTOL uh, functionality, if that's something that's even in here or not. Honestly, I haven't even looked to check. Um, where I'm more considering or uh, interested in for today's flight is how does the aircraft perform? Uh, we have seen other developers of jet aircraft that have done very well and then others that have done very, very poorly um, and charged about the same as, uh, as this aircraft here. So um, this is sort of a comparison to some of the other uh, aircraft that we have available for us. Uh, for example, the Hawk uh, is an absolutely fantastic aircraft, absolutely beautifully done. The flight model is wonderful. Um, also, it is very, very important when purchasing this aircraft and flying this aircraft that you remember that virtually every aspect of this thing is classified. Okay, obviously we can see the displays and things like that, um, but the hows 
and true limits of this aircraft um, are not publicly released. So keep that in mind that the developers have done the best they can with the information that's available to them. Um, so uh, let's make sure that we set our expectations accordingly in regard to that. All right, landing lights come on. Let's take our runway. We don't have to worry about flaps in this aircraft. They're all electronically controlled. You know, I don't recall doing an FCS reset, though. Let's give that a tap here. There we go. All right, so what do we got here? Wheel brakes. Here we go. Coming on. And let's arm that ejection seat. Come on. There we go. Ejection seat is armed. And here we go. Powering up. Going to max power here. Airspeed alive. Gently rotating. Ooh, baby. Nice and pretty. Gear coming up. All right, so it definitely has a very fly-by-wire feel to it, which is exactly what we're looking for. For those of you who don't know, fly-by-wire means that there are no physical connections between the flight stick and the control surfaces. It's all being controlled by the flight computer. Input is received by the flight stick and interpreted by the flight computer, and the flight com computer then determines which control surfaces are best to uh, actuate in order to give the pilot the response that they're looking for. Um, so it's it's a really efficient uh, system. Uh, greatly reduces the need for things such as trim and whatnot. And basically, uh, you can just sort of point the aircraft where you want it, and it knows to keep the nose at that angle. But uh, this is this is very beautifully done. our air base. There's our air base. We're going to do a couple low passes over the runway here and then get us some uh, external shots. I mean, we can hear the sounds and everything from the exterior from a flyby standpoint. that low altitude warning. Got a little slow there. There's a full circle. Ooh. Very maneuverable, very, very responsive. Let's come up over the top. Keep pulling, keep pulling. Roll it over. Fold up, fold up. Yeah, we're fine, Betty. I know it's not really Betty anymore, but close enough. We'll still call her Betty for nostalgic sake, right? Okay, so the aircraft flies absolutely beautiful. I'm thoroughly impressed with the way this thing is handling. Um, it's very, very responsive. Now, to talk about what we were discussing earlier in regard to if I put just a little bit of pressure, so I'm very gently adding pressure into my flight stick, and I'm using the Thrustmaster Warthog, okay? Now, 
I get the bank angle that I want, and then right now I am hands off. My hands are off the controls, my feet are off the controls. So that's that fly-by-wire technology talking. It's going to keep the aircraft right where I want it. It's going to keep the nose pointed where I want it, the bank it where I want it, and I can let go of the control surfaces. Okay. Again, very gentle pressure to bring it back around. So anytime you're doing close formation or just some gentle flying, you want to be real light, real, uh, real feather touch on the uh, control surfaces. Now, when you want to get crazy, I'm going to do the same motion. So I'm going to move the stick only about a half an inch, but I'm going to do it very, very quickly. Okay. So again, that same motion, but we're getting a much more rapid response from the aircraft. That's going to be that pressure sensitivity. It's recognizing, hey, this was a very rapid change. This was a, a, a lot of pressure that was put into the flight stick. The pilot needs me to move now. Okay. So that's what, that's how that all works. The initial versions of the F-16 uh, Fighting Falcon, actually the, uh, the stick didn't move at all when it was first released. It was strictly pressure sensitive and uh, the pilots hated it. They, they, they were trying to break their wrists, trying to uh, feel some input into the controls. They, they needed something. They needed um, just a little bit of tactile feel that the, that the flight stick was actually moving in the direction they wanted it to move. And uh, upon doing so, um, or review from the pilots, um, the later versions of the F-16 were given just a little bit. I mean, just what you see there, that's about the maximum movement of these flight sticks. That's about as far as they move. So let me make sure I can do this without killing us here. Here's going to be a max roll. Watch how little the stick moves. That's all it does. Just a little, just a little uh, rotation. It's got almost nothing to it. Really weird uh, sense in my opinion. Uh, Jeff Faviano did a really awesome uh, review of a new uh, flight control base uh, that simulates this behavior. Uh, it's primarily pressure sensitive, uh, has very little motion in it, um, and I guess is, uh, is quite amazing. I guess quite an, an, uh, an incredible feeling uh, when you get to fly an aircraft that actually behaves in that manner. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, very awesome stuff. So let's see here. What do we got going on here? Let's uh, let's see if we can land this aircraft, and then I think we'll call it a day because uh, this aircraft is just too much fun. Um, as far as the functionality of the systems, just a real so you guys understand, we'll be doing later videos of this. The reason why I don't get into those, oops, I forgot to turn my HUD back on. Uh, the reason why I don't get into those a whole lot when it comes to um, these initial uh, impressions and these first flights is because I don't want to get lost in all of the different systems and functionality um, because in so many ways they're going to be very similar to any other aircraft that you fly especially when we're talking general aviation now, obviously this being a military aircraft uh, there's some slight variation to that but <clears throat> I will tell you the little bit that I've played around them with the display it is extremely well done and extremely versatile and you can enter in waypoints you can load waypoints in from the computer and we'll be taking a look at all of that in later videos uh, today was more or less just about checking out this aircraft and, and, and what it has to offer. Um, it does have speed brakes. The speed brakes are another thing that I think are kind of uh, a neat uh, uh, way of operating as opposed to traditional aircraft where you have a giant wing or a couple of flaps that actually come out and, and break the aircraft's um, airflow over the control surfaces. This aircraft doesn't have a traditional speed brake. It's got, what it does is it lifts all of the control surfaces in enough way to maximize the drag on the aircraft. It's really, really quite an ingenious system uh, using the surfaces that are already attached to the aircraft to slow it down. It's pretty impressive. Um, you know, I don't know if I actually have my speed brakes mapped on this profile, so hang on a second. Let's find out. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay, so I'm trying to get the controls or the aircraft in a way it's weird when it's pointed at you. There we go. There it is right there. Those are speed brakes. <laughs> That's interesting. A little weird. <laughs> Let's try it from inside the cockpit so I can actually get an idea of what's happening here. Speed brakes out. Oh yeah, look at that airspeed. It's dumping quick. Definitely wants to put the nose down. You're going to have to be ready to, to counteract that. But All right, speed brakes retracted. Anybody remember where our airport was? I think it was back over there, huh? Let 
And you guys have to forgive my voice sounds a little weird. Uh, the family and I are unfortunately sick. Getting over the big C. It finally made its way to us. Two, two years I've, I've been able to avoid getting sick, and we finally got it. So it is what it is. But uh, so forgive me if the, if the voice is a little nasally today. Let's see what we got here. I think that's our airbase. Yep, that's our airbase. All right. So let's see. Where are we at? Oh wow, we are cooking. Let's drop them uh, speed brakes out again. I love the detail in the canopy. It's a little too scratched, in my opinion. But I don't know. Maybe that's accurate. I feel like. Uh, a fighter pilot wouldn't want the canopy that uh, that tarnished. I feel like that'd be bad for visibility, but that's all right. There's 220 knots. Gear coming down. Flaps or uh, spoilers retracting. All right, we have our E-bracket there. Now, e is gonna be based on uh, on speed, and I don't know how well that's gonna be modeled here. Oh, let's accelerate a bit. I can't wait till the HUDs are in a better condition. Now, I don't think she's supposed to land at 300 knots, so. Notice the trim hat doesn't seem to do much, so. trying to get my recording software my sky dolly going so that way we can take a replay at the landing so forgive me for that little nose dip there And again, this is without looking at any of the correct numbers, things like that, just sort of eyeballing with what I know about landing some of these aircraft, so I could be way off here. I'm trying to sort of follow that three degree. I'm trying to keep that E bracket right about the in line with our flight path indicator. That's all controlled by our throttle here. go let's first time landing it here we go ooh not too bad at all I will absolutely take that okay so now let's real quickly talk about uh, um, you know our sort of final thoughts here final thoughts on this aircraft is I absolutely believe it's worth every penny of what uh, what's been paid for the 25 euros that's absolutely not bad at all it's a completely functional aircraft it has a ton of functionality the uh, texturing on it is absolutely wonderful the flight model I think is great uh, the fact that they sort of modeled the uh, the pressure sensitivity into the flight stick, I think, is a huge, huge um, 
testament to their capabilities, and I think they've done a fantastic job. Now, in their own documentation, they once again do remind you guys that so much of this aircraft is classified, so they did the best they could with what they had available to us. Um, this is a wonderful airplane. I I'm, I'm absolutely... Uh, stoked at, at how enjoyable it was to fly, how smooth it flew. Uh, it didn't feel like it was on rails or didn't do any of that elevator nonsense that some of the other developer aircrafts do, uh, without mentioning any names. Um, you know, it, it really, it really does very, very well. Um, and, and what you would expect to fly from C from a fifth generation fighter. Um, so hats off to you guys, uh, India Fox Techo. I think you guys have done a wonderful job, and I look forward to. Uh, your future releases. I think this is uh, absolutely wonderful, and, and I highly recommend that you guys give this a shot. If uh, flying age, fifth generation fighter, is something that you guys would be interested in doing in Microsoft Flight Simulator, definitely come to this aircraft first. You have this aircraft out there, the F-22, which is a freeware aircraft out there. I believe it's by these guys, I believe by the same developer. I could be mistaken on that. Um, you have the Hawk T-1. Make sure you, and uh, even the F-18 from Microsoft Flight Simulator or from a Sobo isn't bad at all. Uh, so make sure you guys check those aircraft out, but definitely give this one a shot if, uh, if it's something that really interests you, because I think it's absolutely worth the money. Well, until next time, folks, as always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Leave any comments and questions down below. I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, folks.